Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first good news is that there's no rain. I think there's no rain, right? For another two hours, there won't be any rain. Uh, so, which is a good thing, and I still see crowd outside. So, Chamara, please, uh, let's get these people in. Uh, very good day to you. My name is Arjuna Marampiri. Uh, this is a public lecture we have jointly organized with the uh, Institution of Engineers and SLSTL, which stands for Sri Lanka Society for Logistics and Transport. Yeah, right. Transport and Logistics. Um, let me start uh, this lecture by saying a couple of things. First and foremost, logistics are like this. We will have three eminent speakers, very short speeches, but to the point, to bring up the subject matter that is on the screen. After that, we will have a panel discussion. So there is plenty of time given to the panel discussion at minimum one hour. So you can ask questions and really understand the, uh, the story behind this today's presentation. Having said that, uh, if I recollect, not very long ago, one of the eminent speakers made a big splash. One of the eminent speakers of today made a big splash during the uh, last election, general elections. Right? I think you know who that person is. So when I introduce him, I'll remind you again who that person is. Um, at that time, it became a, actually a serious topic. And I think it had a lot to do with the I would even go out and say that change of government. <laughs> uh, that was the issue of the enormous cost of doing highways in Sri Lanka. Because one thing for sure, uh, last not the last five years or so, but even before, prior to that, we were building a lot of highways in this country. Lots of highways, roads. So the issue was that uh, that they were very costly, cost per mile or kilometer, it's very costly. So that was one of the key seminal points that was in debate before the general elections. The same eminent speaker and some of his colleagues who are eminent in their own right, today have gone beyond that topic. So earlier it was about the cost of highway construction. Can we afford to do that? Today they are coming up with a solution. Rather than saying it's too costly, so if it is too costly, what do we do? So that's why you see a train. I wouldn't mind going in one of those. That looks pretty fancy. So they, the whole today's whole discussion is about railway transport as an alternative to highway building or expressway building and today's discussion is focused on central expressway and seeing the possibilities of coming up with a railway system instead of building an expressway the traditional sense. Now I, I don't want to take too much time, we will have plenty of time to discuss. I have my own questions, you can ask questions, I will give you everybody an opportunity. So let me get to the point here. The if I were to read something from my own notes, the today's topic is to examine critically the need for an ex expensive expressway which will also create its own problems of increasing congestion in and around Kandy because Central Expressway goes all the way to Kandy. So if you take all the cars that are not going there today, I mean I, I definitely don't need to have analysis to understand what it will do to Kandy. So can we avoid that by having a better railway system? To elaborate on this, we have three eminent speakers. Each one will take about eight to ten minutes to deliver their speeches. And first and foremost speaker is one of our own, that's one of our own members of the institution, well-known person. Uh, he has been a past president of our institution and again is a very prominent past president, I would say, as a member. He is a child engineer by profession, a civil engineer and a child engineer by profession. Very interestingly, I found this out later, 
that he I always thought he was a mechanical engineer but I found out that he was he's a civil engineer because for 30 years or 31 years to be exact he is an he had been an employee of Sri Lanka Railways when he resigned he was a general manager there railway runs in his blood because his father himself was a general manager he is none other than engineer Priyal de Silva Priyal de Silva will focus on today's topic in a, in a summary he will focus on the short term and long term planning of this particular idea so without taking a lot of time your time I would invite Priyal to come and deliver the speech good evening uh, it's, uh, I'm very pleased that I'm going to speak to a very large audience and who are interested in this particular topic yes uh, yes my task have been made little easier because uh, yeah I will speak on 1A and 1B while uh, Mr. Nisanayake will speak on long term option 2 and the rest of the thing will be tackled by uh, none other than Professor Mark Kumar here. yeah uh, getting on to the subject straight because I have only limited time uh, yeah these are the three options that we are going to speak on and uh, with regard to the first option the first travel demand to candy present day is uh, in each direction by rail 4000 by bus 6000 and altogether 15000 passengers are traveling and in the slide you get uh, intercity uh, intercity second class third class and AC bus and the travel time is already there by train is about 2 hours 30 minutes and uh, where did it, uh, two hours thirty minutes uh, and uh, by bus is uh, by road it's about four hours forty minutes four hours thirty minutes two hundred seventy minutes or two hundred eighty minutes uh, during uh, rush hour maybe about three hours during non rush time okay then uh, so anyway we are having a train is much faster than the other modes at the moment also <coughs> then uh, now this Kalabukandi intercity especially was started in way back in 1981 uh, by Mr. Veer, when Mr. Virusuri was general manager railways and uh, of course I give here uh, the infrastructure condition of infrastructure at that time uh, but uh, and at that time also the train was running at in 2 hours 30 minutes to Kandy but now uh, later on there is so much of improvement done to our tracks uh, like uh, Kalambu Rabukana has been uh, sort of strengthened, track has been strengthened, curves have been eased off and uh, now the speed is uh, much more than uh, normal 80 km per hour permissible speed and it's uh, all the way up to Rabukana you can run uh, easily up to 100 km per hour. Then uh, also Kalambu Rabukana was, uh, sorry, Polkana Rabukana was single track earlier, now it is double track. And there was no uh, line between uh, addition line between Colombo and Dagama. Now there is a third line between Colombo and Dagama. Then uh, there is a college system between uh, Polkhavel and Rabuk. Earlier it was tablet. Now more than one train can occupy the section between Polkhavel and Rabuk. So there is a lot of improvements done. And uh, and also uh, most of the drivers have told me, Indian drivers have told me that they can't pull Rabuk and Kadugan. Uh, on, a, on the 145 incline uh, at uh, 32 km per hour, although the permissible speed is 32 km per hour, uh, because the water gets heated up and they have to the engine stalls. Therefore, they, um, normally they go at around 40 41 km per hour. I have noticed that because I have been on the engine, I have noticed that. And uh, now, recently, uh, there is a project floated, Kalamu Southwood Railway Replication and Development Project, where the feasibility, pre-feasibility study have been done now and uh, that, uh, very soon the, uh, the feasibility studies will be started on. So because that reason I am not actually uh, anticipating any costs, uh, cost to be given additionally for the any improvement between Kalambu and Rambukkar uh, because uh, this most of this particular go right up to about Polgahavan. 
So there is no, but in the second one, between Prabhu and Kadugana, although there is predicting the offing, but uh, it may take little time. So I am actually giving some uh, costing for that particular project. Okay. Uh, then, now in the short term plan, in order to raise the capacity, main thing is raising the capacity from the present about uh, 4000 passengers, we want to take at least about 6000 passengers. So, there are some improvements to be done to track. One thing is to introduce additional uh, crossing loops uh, at uh, stations between Tabukkana uh, to Kaduban now. That is about another four stations to come up with crossing loops. Okay. Then the next uh, one is introduce colorless system between Tabukkana and Kaduban now. Right, because uh, in, with the Kalna system in, in the same direction, at 3 minute headway, you can uh, then trains. Then, now these are the <coughs> times that I propose uh, once you do the improvement. That is, you can get to Kadu, uh, Kandy in under 10 minutes. These are the various sectional times and speeds, all that is there. Then, uh, at the moment we are having only 13 trains going up to Kandy uh, in each direction, but we want in the short term proposal, we want to increase it to 20 trains. And by 2020, this particularly take about 2 years, by 2020, this is the number of passengers we are going to take by train uh, to Kandy. Now, coming to the, this is the costing uh, done and uh, you can see the uh, local costing is only 5.8 and uh, Indian costing about 13.9 and Chinese costing 32.17. These are costs that I have taken by with the projects recently done for the Sri Lanka railways by both Indians and Chinese. Okay. Uh, then also the cost of rolling stock is separate. I have shown separate. Then uh, this is the uh, so, normally on an average basis, I have taken the Indian costing because normally people will not uh, do for the local costing. Uh, if you are going on tender on that, if the money is available in the treasury, we can do that. Uh, the next one is with the long term plan now we have proposed we have proposed uh, uh, four options the four options are here uh, and then uh, you can see in the uh, most of the options are coming up to Hedini and then divert it from there and the central electricity you can see from top and it's about 4.5 kilometers to Hedini on the central electricity and uh, these are the uh, various features in very on, a, on these options right so we, we can discuss these things at the time of discussion but I, since uh, I have limited time I just rush through these things and uh, here what you can see is the uh, in black in, uh, in the option that we are proposing and uh, uh, this is the in light blue or whatever it is, is the present railway time. And this is the option uh, 2 uh, which is going to Mahayava, option 3 which is going to Mahayava and this is the option 4 going to Kakakastwata and uh, this is the type of comparison of land use details uh, for each option and also the uh, federal electricity. Then uh, we have actually given some weightage and we find that the option 1 to Durambala is the best uh, for this. We have taken those uh, three categories uh, and we have weighted that. Then here again uh, we are taking the option 1 and then also this is the construction cost uh, for the various options uh, and we have uh, Actually, if you take the Indian cost as uh, earlier as I have uh, indicated, it's about 100.4 for those for that particular option. And this is the timing for the particular op option. In 90 minutes, we can get to Kandy uh, on that option 
ออปชันวันโซดิฮิตเดอร์ในปี2025ดิฮิตเดอร์มองต่อไปเห็นจะมีหกตู้แค่ไหน10,000, 11,000, or 20,000. So that's the end of my presentation. And uh, let me call uh, Mr. Ranjit Dasanayak to do the long term presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Priyal immediately called Ranjit because he's a good friend of Priyal. So <laughs> naturally, he was asking Ranjit to step in. But let me do the the. Formalities here and properly introducing for those of you who don't know who Ranjit is. Um, Ranjit is a friend of mine as well. So our next speaker, um, his focus is going to be the trace. You saw that Priyal indicated the the track, the proposed track, and the next speaker that whom we are going to have now have made two presentations here. I remember we we brought him in here from the mechanical engineering sectional committee twice, at least twice. And he is a person who probably only thing I understand is railways. I think that's what you do. You live railways, right? Uh, he is a man who lives railways. Um, written some fantastic books. I have one at home, 150 years old of uh, railway history and Grandpa's golden era. F fabulous book. Uh, if you can lay your hands on it, they should read it. It gives a in very interesting history about our country. So, Mr. Ranjit El Dizanaika is a man, in my opinion, who eat, live, breathe, dreams about railways. That's all I can tell. And he has more than four decades or more in railways, Sri Lanka railways, if, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm right. So Ranjit is going to come and now speak about his personal effort to trace this track, the alternative track. Ranjit, please do the honors. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Arjun. Thank you. Uh, by the way, I have been given only. Uh, Uh, matter of uh, say six, seven, or eight minutes, the most by Mihiraj. He is carrying some papers uh, with four minutes, two minutes, and one minute. I do not know whether I would last four minutes even, because uh, as things are. Yeah, intercity from Kalambu Gampa to Kandy with a link from BIA. That is what I am trying to propose. I am trying to. Propose speed rail for Sri Lanka railways instead of running at uh, 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. I don't, I don't believe in that. So those are our heritage railways. This 32 miles per, 32 kilometers per hour is a heritage railway. It is only plantation railways that they run there at 20, 22 miles. So my aim is to improve on uh, on the rail, uh, uh, the British-led rail network. British-led uh, network. They had some uh, motive behind. The, Uh, in in having that rail, that is to transport their produce, the transport the produce to the harbour. It was it was all uh, economically economically motivated uh, move. So whereas uh, Sri Lanka didn't gain anything by it, and uh, of course uh, the next line is the green line to Kandy. Uh, is the uh, green one is the line to Kandy, and. Uh, And in going to Kandy, you will observe that red arrow over there shows from Ramukkal to Kadugan a steep gradient as one in forty-five, with ten chain radius curves. Nowhere else in the world does we have do we have this type of uh, railway tracks for passenger railways. So why should we continue with this? We must do away with this. That is my motive. And furthermore, from Nawalpeti to Badul, we go at one in forty-four, and from Patipolu to Badul, once again one in forty-four. So we don't want this. We have to change. Let the let the track remain for tourism or for local people to travel about. But this has to change. We need a change. And today, it's economically detrimental and destructive because we are spending so much of money to run one kilometer of train. Of a train, so.
So this is the gradients. The, the, this is a, I have taken this from a permanent book. Uh, level is the ideal situation, 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. That is 1 in 1000 to 1 in 250 is the next best. And from 0 0.4 to 0 0.66, 1 in 200 to 1 in, 1 in 150, third in Sashin, only to be used negotiate difficult terrain. Betterment could be achieved with introduction of technology, modern technology, lengthening of tracks, provision of viaducts, bridges, tunnels, high embankments, and so on and so forth. Never ever sell them in case of emergency, last one. So, so we we shouldn't look at one in one in 150 or above. So we have to stick to these things. Then I go back to George and Robert Stevenson's theory of rail track laying. Uh, it is given in George and George uh, George Stevenson and his son by Samuel Smile, written in 1862. It is there in the uh, internet. You can go through that. It says engine expends half its power for a gradient of one in two sixty, and one in when it is one in hundred, three fourths of its power. The longer flat line must eventually prove superior. That is what George and Robert Stevenson has said. So when this Molesworth track is given, the existing track or the Molesworth track is given in black. The one in red is the Moore-Sums one. Moore-Sums one rejected by Molesworth. And uh, I have found that from Colombo to Kandy, a straight line is the best. But whereas as things are as of today, you cannot uh, you cannot continue that because of the uh, physical constraints. What is in place today with regard to habitations? So I have started off from Gampa with a link to. Uh, link to Bandarnak International Airport, Colombo to Gampa on the same line. From Gampa, a new trace with money in 150 and uh, 1,500 radius curves, right up to uh, uh, right up to uh, Samya Pass, Gilio, and in between Peradini Junction and Gilio. And from from Peradini onwards to Kandy on the same track, double track. Then why did why did uh, uh, Molesworth go one in forty five from uh, from from Ramukkana? Because he thought the best is to go on the flat areas, whatever possible, and then reach Kandy. Whereas there's a range of hillocks just 30, 30 miles away from the shoreline of Sri Lanka. There's a range of hillocks. We must make use of that grade those hillocks to run our trains. At, at, at a gradient so that we could be reach candy in 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 double quick time that's the one once again then uh, the transport sector cut in uh, cut study in 1987 they said they said sri lanka railway still struggling to overcome the legacies of the past and as a result uneconomic services this study was done in 87 i think boy uh, there professor yeah Professor Kumar Gay too was present in that study. Then Major G. F. Wilson in the North Western Railway India in his 1895 27 page report, he disapproves, pulled to pieces, he smashes the track laying conditions, what is prevailing in Sri Lanka. Anybody wa want to wa wants to see these two, two, two passages or information on this subject, please contact me. I am prepared to email whatever information that you require. Then once again, this is my route, Gampaha, through Gampaha to Kandy. Remedial measures, exigent track up to Gampaha, from Gampaha, new trails. Atanagala, Galapitabata, Nukota Bowala, Daskar, Daulugala, Kodakola, Peradini Junction, and again to Kandy on the estate thing. Elevated link from BIA to Gampaha for tourism at second stage. Elevated rail track from Colombo to Gampaha to prevent inconvenience. If there is a possibility, if the money is available, let us have an elevated track from Colombo to Colombo to Gampaha. Uh, Colombo to Gampaha doing away with 12 permanent speed restrictions between Kalania and Gampaha. And from Gampaha to Ramukkana, as it is as of today, there are 10 permanent speed restrictions that which are functioning from the inception today. That is what I say, uh, elevated track from Kalambu to Gampa. 
that is the VIA connection and the Colombo compound connection. Then uh, at feasible study stage, these things have to be looked into. I am not going to read through this. These are just basics in, con in conducting a feasible study. I have just just made a note of it. At the at the at the question and answers time, we'll have uh, we'll have time to discuss all that. And that's that ends that ends my speech. Thank you very much. Okay. Now to our third speaker. Things are moving at a pretty fast pace. Um, our third speaker is a very eminent person. Um, you all know who he is, but nevertheless, his specialty is about transport. If Ranjit, it is from Ranjit I learned that the, the concept of speed and uh, railway track, the speed of a train and how, why the candy railway train is going so slowly. I thought it is because the lovers has bribed the railway system, but actually it's not the case. According to Ranjit, that uh, the track, the current track is, there's no way to go fast, right? Everybody will be down the pallam, candy, kadugana. Similarly, I have learned from this third speaker, never forgets the etched in my mind, uh, color grid of what type of transport systems we should use as the population grows or the number of passengers goes, grows. This is a very famous chart now in Sri Lanka, a lot of people use this. So this person is none other than our Professor Amal Kumarage, a senior professor at the Department of Transport and Logistics Management at the University of Maltua. As I mentioned to you, he's an advisor consultant in the transport arena. He's not a stranger to us. He has been here many times. So, without any further ado, Aman, over to you. Thank you, Arjuna. It's a pleasure to uh, uh, to share uh, something that's been uh, on my heart and realized on many people's heart uh, to to you this evening. <laughs> and you have heard uh, before me uh, uh, what uh, we can expect of the railways. We have many uh, fond memories of the railways in Sri Lanka and as well as many disappointments. And I think it's time has come to change those into yet another, uh, 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 creating another future for railways as is happening in many countries. Of course, the context in which we are talking about this today is in the context of the much debated uh, Central Expressway or what is called a CE Stage 3 to Kandy. <coughs> which uh, is being debated in many places as to whether it is timely, whether the cost is correct, whether uh, so many people have to, you know, lose their properties, etc. and etc. So, uh, um, so we have, uh, in, in, in creating this background, we have looked at uh, the studies behind these, uh, this, this uh, highway. And the first study was actually completed in the year 2001. At that time, it was called the Colombo Candy Alternate Highway. I am privileged, we are privileged to have Mr. Densi Senanayaka here, former general manager of the RBA and also past president of IESL, who actually pioneered the alternate highways concept way back, I think, in the early 1990s. And, uh, okay, sorry, I'm 10 years behind, he says 80s. Uh, so, uh, his idea was to actually uh, improve on the, uh, the existing trunk network, which has now actually uh, uh, gone uh, into an expressway network. So I talk about that as well. In 2013, the government uh, <coughs> wanted uh, SMEC engineering to uh, do the Northern Expressway Feasibility Study. And this was again under this current government, uh, looked at and called the Central Expressway an economic feasibility study was done in uh, last year. <coughs> now, uh, the CKAH, which was studied in 2001, uh, was designed as a four-lane expressway to Ambepusa and then as a narrow four-lane uh, up to uh, the road connecting to uh, Rambukkana and then as a two-lane highway of 29.5 kilometers from 
from Ambay Pestrun to Hayadiniya. And they also added a number of connections to the Kandy Road, to the Katugastara Road, and uh, also, sorry, to the Kurnagal Road and Madhale Road. And the total cost of this was around 12 billion. Now, after that, and so this is the, the costing from their study, and uh, so we have looked at that as well. Uh, now, the traffic estimate in that study for the year 2030 for a two lane road, as you can see, is uh, 26,000 uh, vehicles reaching uh, the, the last point on the link that is uh, to have any. Now, uh, the adequacy of the two lane highway for 26,000 vehicles has also been looked at, and there you can see the level of service. So, uh, there you can see going up to D and E. So, uh, they have used uh, 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 economic growth rate of 6% and if you look at what has happened between 2001 and now, uh, actually Sri Lanka has not even grown at that on average. So, therefore, uh, this traffic estimate actually is still an overestimation for what we have seen so far. Then the Central Expressway in 2013 and 14 made certain deviations, I will not go into the, uh, the, the details of it. Uh, and then they actually uh, uh, moved the Ambepus uh, 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 to Mihirigama, Mihirigama and then from Potuhara they developed uh, another uh, trace to Galagedara that is much uh, further away from Kandy, Hadenia is somewhere here and that is where and they also made it a four lane highway expressway to expressway standards and uh, four interchanges and the cost went up to 132 billion from 12 billion. Uh, and there is also no other provisions to connect to the other roads as well. Now, uh, then again uh, last, uh, last year uh, there was change from uh, uh, stage uh, 3A Ambepusa and now we have come to Potuhara that is the recent most stage that is being developed and this is the traffic estimate done in this uh, recent study which actually gives only 11,000 traffic right. So, uh, so you can see that uh, there have been certain variations in the traffic estimates also right. Um, now, uh, now in terms of cost Mr. Ranjit Desanayaka mentioned about the high speed or what we call the intercity expressway and uh, would have been thinking of how much that is going to cost. Now, this highway is costing us about 4 billion a kilometer, more than 4 billion a kilometer, right. Now, this high speed rail or some people call it intercity train which can run uh, on average up to 150 kilometers an hour which means you can get to Kandy. Uh, in less than one hour. Uh, all over the world we have got the pricing, none of us have direct experience and you can see that uh, even in the US they are, op they are constructing for 3.1 billion, in China 2.5 billion, in Europe of course they go up to 7.1 billion. So it is comparable, it is a comparable uh, thing. Now, if you actually compare the road versus rail, this is the in interesting style, uh, the slide, uh, you can see that currently the Colombo Candy Road, uh, I have taken this from Google traffic data, right, uh, and uh, the travel time at any time of the day changes from 165 to 270 minutes and more people are going at 270 because that is why it is, it is delayed. So, the average will be at least 230 right and the intercity train goes at 150 minutes okay so currently we don't have a problem with the existing railway line right it is carrying nine trains a day on average up to 13 in the weekend 4000 people so we already have a speed advantage of 80 minutes right already with this so called track that mr disanayaka says is a heritage track still it is doing better than of course, this is not satisfactory to everybody. So, what is being proposed today? Uh, if you look at the expressway, the four-lane expressway, I see, uh, I see in the media 
that uh, people saying in one hour you can get to Kandy, in one hour you can get from Kandy to Colombo, right? And that is like people saying from uh, the airport you can get to Colombo 14, 20 minutes. I have said that, you know, uh, you can get to Paliagoda Bridge in 20 minutes and then, I mean, I need not tell you what happens beyond that. Now, so if you actually take the time from Colombo to Khadavata, and then from uh, Galagedara to Kandy, uh, you can do it yourself. You get a minimum of 115, maybe 180, 80 minutes. That's average of 170. Now, what Mr. Priyal de Silva suggested as the immediate measure of doing improvements between Rambukkana and uh, Kadugannava and electrifying, right, which can be done in two years and will cost us only 11.5 billion. Yeah, okay. Color lights with color lights only without electrification, and we can run at 110 minutes. Okay, so altogether, there is still that is faster than the expressway, that will be still faster than the expressway, and it will cost only 8 percent of what is being spent on that. Only 8 percent, right? Then, if you look at a two lane highway, now actually. What was originally proposed was a two-lane highway uh, between uh, between uh, Abepusa and uh, Galagedra. Section was called a narrow four-lane, and beyond that. Now that is not to expressway standards, right? Now, if you actually look at the travel time uh, between four lanes and two lane, the saving is five minutes. It's five minutes. Right? Of course, you will save some fuel also because there is a huge increase in fuel consumption between 80 kilometers and 100 kilometers. Right? So, uh, you will only save 5 minutes if the section be beyond, uh, beyond uh, Ambe Pusa, now in this case would be Potuhara, uh, is considered as a two lane or non expressway standard. Right? So, that again the cost will come down I think more than 50 percent. In my estimation, it will be 60 percent because interchanges are the most expensive, right? Expressway standard is very expensive to maintain, right? Now, new trace to Rambukkana, what Mr. Priyal de Silva said, Rambukkana to Kandy an entirely new trace. It's important because in the current one, we cannot run more than 20 trains in one direction because of the section between Rambukkana and Kadugana. Now, a new trace will enable us to run 30, maybe even 40 trains a day. Because now, speed is not the problem running to Kandy. We need more trains and more people will go. Now, because it, the time advantage is there. So, this new tra track will be able to take uh, in 90 minutes and there will be a speed advantage of 75. So, I have put down 85 billion. I think you said under the Indian cost it is going to be. 100 billion. Okay, so small correction. Even then, you can build a new trace to Rabukkana and the two lane highways and still have some more money left. Okay. Then the, the, the new track that Mr. Uh, Ranjit Disanayaka mentioned, the new intercity expressway, all the way from Colombo, 115 kilometers at around 3 billion a kilometer, will cost 350. Uh, billion, whereas an equal four lane highway would probably cost a little more. So, by 2036, what will be the traffic pattern be? Currently, we are here, and then by 2036, if we can run 40 trains to Kala, uh, to Kandy, uh, <coughs> we hope to take 18,000 people by rail and 22,000 people by road, right? So, that will basically uh, require another road, a two lane, another two lane road, well engineered, which can reach 80 kilometers an hour, will be more than adequate. So, uh, operationally, uh, now can the railway manage this? Now we know that the railway operates to uh, Jaffna 400 kilometers and charges 1500 rupees for a uh, fully AC train, that is 4 rupees a kilometer. The luxury buses are also charging, I think, a little more than that. Right now, uh, in Kandy, the the fares are actually for a captive market. Uh, the can the first class fare, which is the only AC fare, is eight hundred rupees. Second class fare is uh, two hundred and eighty rupees. So 
there really uh, actually if it restructures its uh, its uh, um, fares not necessarily to increase uh, 4 rupees a kilometer it is actually recovering the cost of uh, the operation now right at currently ac buses are charging 270 which is the same as the second class fare the super luxury buses are charging 4 rupees so uh, basically the railway can be a cost effective competitive even commercially oriented operation uh, so finally what are the issues here we have high cost uh, the 2001 proposal for a two lane four two lane uh, 45 kilometer road was 200 million and then in 2013 uh, this was made into the a four lane road for the same traffic and it became 700 million and then uh, in 2016, we have a feasibility study which uh, places it at uh, 890 million for half that traffic, right? So I can't understand as an engineer, I can't understand the logic how when the traffic comes down, the price goes up and when the traffic stays the same, it goes from two lane to four lane. So I, I don't know, you have to ask somebody else about the logic of that, right? So uh, economic viable, uh, you know, the cost triples, but it is still justified. All these are saying it is viable, viable. I can't see how one report when it says it is economically viable and when the cost triples, quadruples, how it becomes viable. These are all questions that unfortunately, please don't ask me, uh, you know, because I don't have the answers for that, right? Now, uh, one of the other things is, of course, uh, none of these actually uh, look at other modes of transport and I think this is a violation of the planning processes that are required by the CEA and the National Planning Department, which requires alternates to be studied. Okay, so whether alternates were studied, I could not find in these reports. Right, um, right. So we also know that uh, the traffic, we cannot build highways and expect traffic congestion to be reduced. And uh, I'm a good case of point is the. Katunayake Expressway. We spent, if I remember right, 51 billion for that highway. And now I think RDA is spending uh, another 40 billion to bring the traffic congestion from that side of the bridge uh, to inside of Colombo. And I don't think you will need maybe about another 100 billion to take it from there with elevated roads that are being proposed to places like Rajagiriya as if Rajagiriya doesn't have congestion and then maybe you know spend some more to take it from some there to somewhere else. So is this what's going to happen to Kandy? Right? The, you're, you're bringing a four lane highway to Galagedara and then having a two lane highway from there. Right? As you come to a city the number of lanes must increase not decrease. So these are some of the issues that need to be looked at. So in conclusion, uh, feasibility studies should assess alternatives so the railway has not been assessed. It is not too late to assess that now. Maybe some design changes can be done to the highway trace. But more importantly, the railway should be again reconsidered. Um, railway will have less impact on traffic congestion in Colombo and Kandy. I think we need to ask uh, the RDA and other agencies that are promoting when you build this highway uh, will it ease congestion inside the cities i think we need to ask how that has been studied what are the numbers it's easy to say you will have you know uh, fast travel time but i think many of you have experienced what happens in palia Pali then we know that railway is a more sustainable uh, development for the future many countries in the world are now looking at railway not only in urban transportation but intercity transport right uh, many city pairs now in europe and uh, in even in the states in japan which have intercity expresses run a train every half an hour run a train every half an hour so you you can run 30 trains an hour 40 sorry a day 40 trains a day and that is the kind of service we can give between colombo and candy if you have so each train carrying 400 passengers 450 passengers 40 trains 18,000 people in one way so that is possible and it can be done and mr randy disanayaka gave us a view of what we need for the future for the 21st century uh, railways all over the world 
take pride in 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 staying as a 19th century railway uh, there may be a place for heritage railway but also uh, there is now an awakening with uh, new technology to actually position for the 21st century and i think uh, we uh, have an opportunity in sri lanka for a new paradigm shift for railways so that we have uh, an intercity rail network a new rail network that will be capable of managing 100 150 km average speeds not maximum speeds so uh, trains also one can argue and say it is station to station time but sri lanka also has fairly good uh, bus connectivity taxis three wheelers for people to get to stations and so on and uh, within uh, half an hour you can get to more stations where people live and work so i think network is there for railway to be well supported so thank you very much and over to you Now that my name is also mentioned, give me about five minutes because I have to have to leave before. Uh, Do you want to come and speak? Here? Yeah, yeah. That's part of it. Um, that what? Yeah, just a second. Let me get ready for that. Uh, can you get that camera? Come on. Camera corporate kind of lights to the hand. I need some help from my mechanical engineer section committee team member. Is Kumud? Can you keep an eye on the uh, Kumud? Keep an eye on the camera. Once it's on, the one in the middle, white one. Shamra will tell you. Get all these lights. Shamra, there are some lights missing here. There should be some more lights, right? So what we will do now is we will begin the panel discussion. Uh, We have the three speakers, but uh, we're going to invite the fourth person, uh, Dr. Lakshmi Gunawan. You are invited, sir, uh, to this eminent group of people who talks about. Uh, I didn't give you an introduction because I think people know you. You're always there on TV or somewhere. Um, let's begin the session, and I will get some opportunities for all of you to ask some questions. Let me turn on my. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, you are invited, sir, to this eminent group of people who talks about it. Uh, can you give me an introduction because I think people know you. You're always there on TV or somewhere. Uh, let's begin the session and I will get some options. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Ah. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, mics. You got two, three mics. One for the mics to the audience. One mic to the audience. Maybe two mics. Yes. Maybe four mics. Yeah. Yeah. We got two mics for the panel, and then two for the audience. Right. One to the left. One to the right. Ah. Uh,
in, in the world is uh, referred to as context sensitive design. You see, not to move for the technical fit per se. And then uh, in that context, as Dr. Amal Kumar said, most of the places can be just two lanes. Uh, in which can be improved to four lanes if need, needed. And it will be stage development also. That besides all that, I have to bring out one point. Now the total traffic, total traffic uh, in, in, the, in the country is about uh, 6.5 million, right? Total uh, vehicular, vehicular traffic is about 6.5 million. Of that, about 3 million are motorcycles. And over 1 million are three wheelers. Now, on these expressways, what are the vehicles that can go? Only a selected block. Three wheelers can go, motorcycles can go, right? You can walk along that, right? So, uh, people must uh, figure out what are the expressways for? And you are eliminating 70% of the travellers from using them. And we are spending 5 billion per kilometer, right? 5 round. And sometimes it's more because of various other reasons, right? Which we cannot talk about. Right? Then, no, no. You see, you are people, even the normal bus cannot go on It is a special bus. And it is, it is a bus that is prepared to pay 500 uh, 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 rupees uh, going from here to this Mahatra or whatever, or maybe to go, right? No. So, the common man, common man who uses the motorcycle, who uses the three-wheeler, who uses the normal bus, cannot use the space. Let me leave uh, um, with that idea in you. I, I would like you all, uh, the president of the institution and the, the group president, to, uh, to create a workshop of this, with all what we have said. You said some wonderful things about new improvement. You said how the existing thing can be improved. I am also for railways, although I will be the highways. So uh, let's try and have a workshop. Thank you very much. Right. Let's um, let's do this, Professor And I want to. Uh, is it okay if I call you Piyasa? Mama? Ranjit and Mula, right? That's how we, I call it. These are all my friends. <laughs> like, like, Lux. <laughs> right. Uh, Prasama, I would like to get things in the context. A lot of people. Huh? <laughs> yes, yes, but I will start with Prasama. <laughs> uh, it's very difficult to you know, change the context, but maybe I'll get it. Now, uh, the, if I were to summarize this, what I understood. You are proposing a railway track instead of an expressway from Ramukkana to Tandy initially, but it can be extended from Kalamu to Tandy as well. Current central expressway is from Ramukkana to Tandy, right? The thesis, or rather the pro proposal, is if you do it that way you can take more people between the two locations and in between and travel speed will be faster which is ideal for a railway system because railways uh, advantages are railways can take large number of people uh, transfer, transportation of goods and high speed which is why Rajiv proposed a new trace because if you take the same old tra track you can't go fast the First question I have, where is the money? Where will the money come from? Then then I'll get to the deep deals. Okay. I would like to say my pocket, but you probably have there some than the government. 
Indian. See, uh, it depends on what we spend the money for. If we don't spend for the things that don't help us, I'm sure we will find money for it. What? What? Yeah, so what we are proposing here, just to make sure everybody understands this very complex presentation, is that there's something possible in, in two years with 11.5 billion, which is only 10% of what is being proposed to spend by including the traffic of Rabukana and The main idea is not so much speed, but to enable 13 trains now to go up to 20 trains. So which means you can actually take more people in even less time. Between Rabukana and Kandy? No, no, no. not allowed. From the wall, the right. Okay. Yeah, the current 150 means can be reduced to 110 minutes. Okay. So 11.5 billion will include the existing railway track or increase? No, 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 same track. Same track, improving. Yeah. Yes. Improving. So more people can be taken because more trains can run. Yeah. Right. The idea here is should be to get people between Kalanga and Kandy fast, not to build a highway. Right? I mean, that should be the underlying reason. That's what people want. The second one we are supposed to, proposing is long term. Now, all the long term, there are two options. One is a new trace from Rahukrana to Kandy, which will not have this steep gradient, which can accommodate trains at higher speed, where the travel time from Kalambu can be reduced to 90 minutes. That will cost about 100 people. Okay. The, the second long term option is a new paradigm shift altogether of saying let's have an entirely new high speed railway network or intercity railway network and have one coming from Kalambu all the way to Kandy as a person. Through, uh, through Gampa, then going much south uh, to uh, and coming from Gali Nothing to do with the current place. The current railway can remain. That is a replacement or an alternative to expressway building or a complementary to expressway building. Okay, uh, I'll give the opportunity for the audience, but I want to clarify one point. The third option, <coughs> brand new trace, brand new system, brand new trail attack. That I understand, the speed will be very fast because new trace, new trains and all this stuff, it will increase the the the, uh, the passengers. The other two options that you propose, you are proposing, the way the number of passengers will go up is because we are going to increase the number of trains. The speed also goes up. Yes. At which stage? The phase one or the phase two? Both. Both. Okay. I'll take the first question uh, from the audience. Uh, I would prefer, sir. Uh, to all of you, just um, We have time one hour exactly. From starting right now, we have one hour. So let's get to the. We'll ask questions and get the answers from the audience. Just so people can ask, my name is Dan. I'm from the airport. I'm from the airport. New place, new condition for this ride. It's a nice place. Most of the ride is the Deacon Place, which is the most famous of some of these. I don't know whether you have considered the total cost, including the signaling tracks and everything, or with the single rail or double track. That's what I want. Railway one. Well, what I have proposed is a double track from Colombo to can be elevated plus Kalamu to Gampaha elevated and from Gampaha you turn right and follow the route what I proposed up to Peradini Junction and make use of the double track Peradini Candy to be used on this high speed rail. Uh, as it is Kalambo to Kampa on the intercity, it takes nearly 25 minutes. And from 
one part can be it consumes another two hours. So why my attempt is by introducing a high speed rate to run 150 miles an hour at that time to 35 minutes so that a train could travel from Colombo to Rampaha and to Kandy in one hour. That is then the next stage, Colombo to Rampaha, if you run elevated, it will take only 13 minutes at, at say 150 miles per hour from Calumia Bridge onwards on an elevated track. Say track, devoid of curves, devoid of gradients, on the straight track. And from Gampa to Kandy, it will be 27 minutes. Overall, 40 minutes to Kandy. This is not something new. It's, it's happening all over the world. As Professor Kumar mentioned, it's happening in China. They are running at 350 miles per hour. Recently, they ran at 508 kilometers per hour. In, in China, in Japan, in Korea, in the Western world, in Germany, in France. So they are all running. So I mean, Japanese Hitachi has well over 50 years of experience behind it. So they know the technology is available. And we don't want to run at 350 miles or 250 miles. We are a small country. Let us run at 150 miles. Ready. Okay. That is by which, by which, by which, by which we are beating road traffic, okay. relieving congestion. Right. So the cost, the cost, the cost. If we could, if you could spend from Madhuvala to Kerala at 54 kilometers, 54 uh, US dollars per kilometer, or a four lane expressway, the railway needs only two lanes, upline and downline, on a single elevated column, if you can spend at least one third of it, 18 US dollars per kilometer, that is why what I propose. And where the money, as somebody says, let me let me answer that question. Without discrediting anything, without questioning any of the bus that I have been building, which I have a lot of concerns. You did elevated express railway track, not to 300 kilometers, but to run at 100 kilometers, let's say, at 10 million dollars a kilometer, with the signaling roughly 300 million dollars for nearly 30 kilometers. Okay, including signal. That of course I have a lot of questions why you spend so much on the signaling. Leave those aside. We have that very readily in hand, the project is still going on. And with that cost, you can do it up to candy easily with 3000 million dollars. 3000 million dollars is 3 billion dollars. Right? Now with 3 billion dollars, if you can do the highway, uh, the, 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 the railway, dual track. How much is the, the, the cost that you are doing for the expressway? How much is the, the expressway cost coming? 4 billion. Now this is, this is, we are talking about the, 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 the super express new rail. Up in here, 4 billion, I got a salary in here, but 3 billion is in here. You can't say, wait, I expressway is there, and then you want to have you want to have a railway. I think mean, that's a ridiculous question. You have to choose between the railway and the expressway. That is where the national planning department and the Ministry of Finance and the planning ministries of the respective ministries are there, and that is why they are paid money. The economists, the accountants, the planners. They are paid salaries to do this job. Now, 
to answer to the question of it, add to uh, what Mr. Nijas Kanayan to say, why look? Yes, sir. Then it did. Then I did the case, then he said, I spent a while ago. What he mentioned was, we need like a pay under that, what a vice president under that. But who are paying for this? Those three-wheel guys and motorbicycle guys and Pahiyana ki misu, Pasekkana ki misu, these highway first take a bear, expressway first take a bear. But if you do a railway, it is not so, because anyone can go in there. It is more equitable. Unfortunately, in this country, there is money for expressways and more money when the projects are more costly. But there is no money for railway. Even if the railway is with all those additional expenditures, still cheaper than the express. I think that question is inexistent and ridiculous. We have money, we can do it, and it is at least 10 times cheaper if you do it locally. That's a totally different question. Where some railway people will not agree with me. But you can do it, and if you do it locally, it's so much the better. With lot of economics, lot of technological advantages, lot of learning advantages, lot of uh, future futuristic benefits and multiply effects. Right. Until uh, the next question comes, I would like to pose this question to any one of the panelists. The question is: Now the <coughs> trains have the, some of the advantages that you mentioned. And also one of the key advantages, they are dependable. You know, to do, you know, they are, once you put the system in, they are then dependable and they are fixed routes, everything is fine. However, we were talking about these three-wheel drivers, people who travel by buses and etc. etc. In this corridor, the connection to the main track, is it there? I mean, how do you look at that? I mean, is it okay? The, the people who come from their homes to the railway stations, etc., there's plenty of normal transport systems to connect, right? Between this Kolga, the Kalamur Candy area. How, how do you, have you thought, thought, thought about that? Which option you are talking about? No, the, the short term option? Yeah, no. The short term option or the long term option. The key short -term option already the trace is there. Trace the connections are there. Yeah. So only thing is that you will have intermittent crossing stage. That's right. So this factors when the long term option comes. Long term option is a straight run from flying from uh, 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 Gambhar Kandy. That's a Sunday. It's a deep pump, it is a deep pump, it is a deep pump. That is an intercity express line right. where the current one can operate for the kind of local commuter track. Right. So actually, you are adding new capacity. You are adding new capacity between cities. Uh, today in Europe, the trains are competing not only with the roads but with the air travel because they, they are much more accessible. So yes, I mean a lot of people, uh, if you are going from uh, Candy to uh, let's say Bhavakapala or whatever, that may not be, you may not want to take the intercity express. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you may not want to take the intercity express. This is basically city to city. The, 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 the third option. The third, third, third option. Right. Any questions from the audience? I will jump in when I think there are more. Okay. My question is, uh, I think from a different uh, aspect of it, the fact that we have whatever type of rail facility we are talking about, isn't it a given fact that the roads also have and have been used and will continue to be used. So we got to this is that it is not this or that. It is either this and that or one supplementary here. Now we say at the moment we run 13 train uh, 13 trains per day. We increase it to 20 percent increase. But 50% increase of what? <coughs> because the fact that people still want to get about. Right? When the Southern Express started, there are here a 
other than the dogs, there was nothing else to go for the getting killed. Now, you have passed out the whole lot of things running by it and so on. This thing will happen. So I can't see our existing without the proper training, uh, road access to can. And other question is, can be is congested, there is no doubt about it. <coughs> But the fact that you have an expressway doesn't mean that all the people who go on the expressway end up in any town in that little patch there. And and he has enough uh, roads around it that you don't you can get from into Kandy and out of Kandy without getting into the city. So what I am saying is I think we have to sort out the why this is so costly and get that sorted out and get a viable road system in the gas. The railway, yes, and you all do respect and so on. Are we, and once the trains are okay, don't forget that that system has to be maintained and that's no chicken thing. Once the road is done, make it the road is a slightly different or not different. If that happens, and when there is state organization, we know what happens. We import the, what do you call this thing, the big scan or something, a lot of noise. And after a couple of times, we take the attack very correct. Thank you. Let me kind of explain that. I think, uh, if you ask the people from the RPA behind you, they will tell you how costly it has become to expect to maintain expressways. And we still haven't gone into 10 years and more. Uh, so, so I think uh, there is no comparison of what it costs to maintain. Basically, it costs about 1%, 2% of the, of the capital cost. Whatever you build. Whatever you build. So it doesn't make, make a difference. The thing about traffic in Kandy now, uh, actually, there are many people. Uh, Amar, just in this intention. 2% of what? For the railway solutions that work and highway solutions create traffic congestion and actually become problem uh, uh, Let me, I want to yes, answer sir, sir. briefly to that question. We never plan things A, O, B. We take A and B and prioritize. That is why the planners are there. So when the, the capital expenditure estimated for the improvement of the existing railway track is just 11 billion Sri Lankan rupees. Just 11 billion Sri Lankan, not dollars. A set of planners saying that that money is not available but they have money to build up an express state, if you can be, is ridiculous. Number two, if the express state, even if it is a substitute directly, if it, even if it is direct substitute, if the express way is substituted by the railway, still it is better. I am not saying, as Professor Kumar said, that we can do it that kind of a direct substitution, but still, you take that load away from the existing candidate the existing candy road, the passengers are going to be much more uh, east of. So, railway carrying more will ease the existing candy road and, the, and bring down the necessity of expanding or uh, increasing road sector capacity. And that should be a specific policy agenda, leaving aside the capital part of it, because moving passengers and goods away from the road to rail has to be our sustainable long term solution. So, I am not saying that you don't do expressways. That's not the case. Prioritize, select what is the priority and give money for those. Go for local solutions as best as possible and go for least cost solutions as best as possible. One more thing, if you permit, I don't know how much is voted this budget yet. I did not see the Visarjana Panatha yet. But last year, the RDA alone was voted 145 billion Sri Lankan rupees of the taxpayers' money. 
as capital only. Whereas the Sri Lanka railway is getting only 15 million Sri Lankan rupees. So, railway to put on RTA, that's no problem. You give so much of money. And then, more often when I go to these presentations, people ask, railway is uh, wasting money, it's a loss making entity, it, it has to, it doesn't pay off its expenditure. But no one is asking how RTA is paying off its expenditure. This is ridiculous. It is a policy biased against the railway sector in this country. We need to put money in the railway, develop the railway, explicitly railway development. That's the only way to solve the long-term transport solution uh, problem uh, in, a, in a sustainable way. Okay, Dr. Kuruva, now that uh, very elephant speech, I'm scared. I'm very scared now. <laughs> because what I heard was as a, just a guy who, who prefers railways as well as road uh, travel. I heard, uh, and I, I think I, you, I heard it right, and I agree with you, that maintenance of road systems, etc., are not thought out very well. So we are going to we are spending money on roads. Instead of that, let's spend some of that money on railway. This, this is the basic premise of today's discussion. The reason is we have to draw a baseline somewhere. But uh, why I said I get scared is because neither the road systems are well thought out. And the railway systems, I'm, question, I'm about to question now whether it has been thought out, right? Because at the end of the day, uh, it's not just a scientific study from a drawing a baseline and saying from here, what is the right solution? It is the whole of everything, right? So let me ask these two questions. One, in the proposed system, three ideas, face, face down. Actually, the third one is a spread off, right? It's, 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 it's not a face thing, it's a it's solution on its own. It is the first and the second ideas are combined. Transport of goods, is it part of the deal? Part of the deal. What is there to transport from Kandy to Colombo? I'm just asking. Because the focus is on passengers. Most of the data was given on passengers. A lot of people coming and going back from Colombo. In fact, I would like to know for what purpose. But uh, nevertheless, the question is when people, when they build the southern highway, while the, all the, the, the new cars are going back and forth, uh, what has that added to the country's benefit? Are there factories on the other end? Are there factories on this end? Have people decided to go back? All these questions have come into our mind. So similarly, yeah, if you get a new railway system, not that it is the bad idea. In fact, there are enough reasons to say railway is better for public transport than uh, uh, road system. That's no brain. If you, if you have the money, you do with that. It does not bring. But the overall, what is the big picture is all about? Why are we building a railway system and bringing a lot of people to Colombo from Colombo to Kandy? What is there to do? And what, what goods are we going to transport? Because last time I checked with the, the, uh, the so-called year 2025 or whatever the 2030 plan, most of the activities in Kandy is going to be on uh, ICT, Information and Communication Technology Hub. It's not going to be a manufacturing hub. So I'm just posing this question, the, the holistic picture. Any any thoughts on that? Yes, yeah. uh, maybe 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 this is actually you go ahead and answer the first right. Okay, whatever gets transported from can be to Balang by road can be transported by rail. Yeah. There's no issue. Uh, if it is cheaper, if uh, it's more convenient, they will ship. Once upon a time when it happened. And now I know the railway is approached from time to time by different shippers uh, who want that service. But the railway, for lack of investment, lack of capacity, is unable to undertake these things. Right? So there is traffic that can go. Uh, different destinations uh, will have different traffic. Not only these two, but even the intercity express can actually take traffic. Now, for example, the new trains, now we know we cannot take the containers uh, up front. Right. But now with Rambukkana to countries, you can actually uh, take containers to uh, Palikali and places like that where there are industrial zones. And Mr. Nisana uh, uh, was given more time to tell how this intercity express train can be extended to Badul and even beyond. And it can take passengers as well as others. Right? Now we have a big problem in uh, bringing uh, Rambukkana from, from places like Uruk. So these 
these are all possible. So whatever the Lord can do, then they will can not Just to add to what I must have done, he answered the question. Why should, if I am a man, if I am a freight transport provider, why should I choose the railway thing? There should be reason to choose rail. Railway department has no has no incentive or even no mandate to transport freight for private sector who are earning profits on their business at a cost, at a loss. Right? So if I am a if I am a freight provider, freight transport provider, let's say a uh, 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 logistic service provider, I do it for profit. I go and contract with the railway, okay, transport my container or whatever uh, from X to Y, I ask for a quotation. Railway's general manager has no mandate to contract with me at a loss. He can understand railway general manager uh, charging less than the cost price for Samudra Devi Express train, for the poor man's Mahava Office train. But there is no reason why railway should earn losses for a private sector freight provider to make profits. So railway will add all their, at least the variable cost into their charge, including the track maintenance, signal maintenance, and if, if ever the payment of uh, 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 you know any loans or whatever component that went into the construction of the infrastructure. That's the normal way. If I was the general manager, that's what, that's what I would do. But the trucker who is going on the Kalamu Gol uh, Expressway or Kalamu Candy Expressway is transporting is free of charge. Because the road is not, RTA is not charging anything for the infrastructure from the road user. You charge the true cost on the freight mover on the road, railway will get the business tomorrow. You charge the true cost of the expressways, you charge the true cost of the expressways built to, built to uh, Madara and build it on the user. There is no reason why the poor taxpayer bears on that. Because these are built for the rich people as Mr. Seranayaka said. If you build the true cost of loans, interest, maintenance, electricity, policemen and things alone, this toll is not sufficient. I'm telling you. So increase the toll for the true cost payment, the railway will get business. What we are doing is we are depriving the railway on the one hand from the money, the resources, on the other hand by policy, by creating an explicit subsidy on the highway and expressway. Poor man is taxed to give the benefits to the rich person. What a country we are living in. We are talking about school uniforms is a criminal subsidy. We are talking about free education and free health care, wasting money. But we are very, very happy to give to expressways and uh, highways free of charge for the motorists. The most criminal subsidy that we have in this country is giving expressways and highways. Expressways, of course, they are charging, but less than the, the true cost. And highways, we don't charge at all. So let's get out of this criminal uh, subsidy. Oh, I have another solution. Create a railroad development authority and don't ask their expenditure. <laughs> right. Uh, not to digress from the, any other. Uh, shall, I, shall we take questions from the audience, please? Yes, there's one. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you please uh, say the name and ask the question to the audience? You want to take your iPad? Yeah, my question is like, where do you go to the PR system? Okay. It's like, that's a project coming soon. Can you bring the mic closer to you? Yeah, identification, training system. I think there's a project coming soon right here at home, professional network, network, and uh, Founded by AP Land. Uh, yes, uh, Sri Lanka Railway Department, UDA, Megapolis, project. I, I first question is, is there a project like that? And uh, short, big, long term, 
Now we talk about uh, Paris, uh, what do you call this, uh, sustainable development, pollution and all those things. Have you taken into consideration the benefits of not polluting the, the country with ton of cars? Have you taken that into account in your thinking process, uh, numbers? Yeah, actually, uh, there's a sustainable development plan 2030 that is, I think, registered and it has been put out today. So, uh, they are in uh, some of us have been contributors, and this is one of the things that when you look at sustainability, it's not only they are the ingredient, but the land we live on, you know, and the resources we have. So, whatever you take, I think railway is a winner. You know, we, we, we cannot keep on building highways and expressways and you know, taking people up of their lands. Uh, whereas uh, one track uh, can take uh, about three or four times the number of passengers uh, that the road will take. So I think uh, if you look at all of those parameters, that is why many more countries worldwide are, are doing this, uh, where they are uh, trying to preserve the land and have modes of transport that can carry more people on the nature track. Thank you. Questions? Couple of them coming up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, Vedder Rage from uh, University of Colorado. Uh, after observing around 40 years about uh, 300 grade, I have a uh, few uh, questions to carry back. Three questions. First one, uh, being a department of grade, was there any uh, difficulty for you to develop the railway system in Sri Lanka? That, so that's my first question. Second one, so we are running a broad gauge. Right? Uh, was that uh, made some difficulty for developing? I saw that, right? Like uh, uh, we have to buy, always we have to buy, uh, what do you call that, uh, tailor-made uh, rolling stock. We can't buy on market. If it was uh, the standard gauge, we could quickly buy from uh, other country or even re uh, refurbish second hand ones, we could buy. Third one, uh, the universities, like uh, for, I think, uh, from, uh, maybe in the uh, 80s, from 80s, no university like uh, added uh, a course on railway. <coughs> right, I think no graduates in railway side. So, I, mean, I just want to know right, uh, how those things affected our railway industry. Okay. Uh, so that you can hear me, right? Okay. Now, with regard to your first question, uh, now, in 1950, there were not initially, the Uttam line was the was the in Bangladesh. And our local engineers proceeded it up to Putra from Bangladesh. Right? And from Bangladesh, they went to the cement uh, company came in uh, uh, It was extended from Bangladesh to the Gabriel Singapore. Right? It's all we didn't get any foreign people, we didn't get consultancy from various organizations in Sri Lanka even. It was all done by railway. Then, uh, in uh, 1990, uh, under former president Raymond Arthur, he requested a separate line from Andhra to Lincoln. Because we did the equation, we did the aim of line, embankment fee, everything, and that time of day, we did a period of over six months. All by railway need. Then, uh, in, uh, again in 1990s, we did the broad gating of the Kandivani line right from Mardana right up to Pantarada. And in about 5-6 years, we finished that. Then at the same time, the third time from Mardana to Rakhama, all done by railway engineers. Right. In addition to our maintenance, we did the new construction. At the same time, we did the double track from Polka to Rakhama. Right. The and also under my uh, guidance when the tsunami affected the river in the car, in the south, we did it in 57 days. We didn't get any help from outsiders. We didn't get any consultancy from TC to get a bank. It was under my situation. Our railway engineers, some of these engineers are here today. 
six, uh, 600 uh, marks, they gave me 60 and uh, 58 were women. <laughs> and when I, when I told them I want people, I want uh, these timekeeping clerks and uh, war clerks to be, uh, to be employed in the night to, to, to uh, uh, record the time off at the sheds where the shed employees were coming half naked with uh, oil, mata, everything in their, in their body. How can I keep a lady at midnight uh, 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 at a desk too? Then the answer comes to me from the Director General of Mind Services, that is the uh, uh, Sakra Devendra who is recruiting uh, uh, management assistants into the departments all over the country. So Sakra Devendra said, what the hell can I do sir? If, if I, am, I am having an advertisement, people are applying, I am contacting an exam, if the ladies are the ones who are getting through, what the hell can I do? I can't change their sex and say to you. Uh, <laughs> That is the department structure we are working today. So I, knew, I was one of the ardent uh, uh, advo advocates of keeping the railway department for two things. One, when the railway department is there, it is very difficult for the unscrupulous political governments to sell the property off. Because in the railway department, the railway is still there, I'm telling you. So I'm happy. If it was a corporate body or a company, half would have been sold by now. Because we can't trust our governments, whether it is what we do, regardless of the color. Secondly, government department gives a certain kind of job security for the employees and they, they, their, their rights can be uh, protected. So I was an ardent supporter of the department structure. But today I believe, for the very two reasons, the railway department structure has limited us and prevented us from going further. We have done the research. If you want to go and refer to the Sri Lanka Economic Research Conference 2016, there is a publication on that. The research we have conducted, the publication is there. How department structure is preventing the, 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 the organizations to take commercial decisions. Generally, the railway cannot take any decision. He cannot recruit, he cannot transfer, he cannot punish, he cannot do anything. And there are godfathers in different different places, public service commission, the direct general uh, combined services, direct general uh, establishment, and uh, you have uh, uh, direct uh, engineering service board. Uh, there are gods, and those are the ones who are taking decisions. If the railway general manager is to take action based on the railway ordinance, he has to have the powers to exercise that duty. The which you cannot do. Just give me one more one more second, please. I, I want to answer this. Because of that, and the second reason why I am uh, upset with that decision of how protecting the railway department. If the railway was commercialized 20 years ago, and if we had companies, private sector companies, of rail track construction, rail locomotive maintenance construction, railway uh, uh, track development construction, at least there would have been some local private developed railway industrial bodies owned by the private sector who would today shout against selling our business to Indians and Chinese. Here the protected railway department on our blood and sweat, they keep silent. The railway management, railway engineers, railway uh, organizers, they are just deaf and dumb and waiting until their future is being taken over by the foreign companies. If there were at least some private bodies which we developed, they would have shouted. For example, when the footwear industry is coming to Sri Lanka, there is DSI to protect. Yeah. If there is, uh, now, now the... the, the, the no, 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 no. I, I, you, I, I, I hear you, but loud and saying I don't know, I have to explain that I said. Can you permit me one more minute? His second question. His second question. Yeah. The track grade. Yeah. Is there any law that says that the track grade should be protected? There is no problem of uh, procurement because of the brokerage. Even if it was standard grade. We would, have, we would have procured at the most expensive price from the rest of the world. Because procurement is not on the competitive agenda building anymore. You go with uh, negotiated contracts with someone, which give uh, the people the highest commission, and that is how the locomotives, tracks, construction, everything is coming to this country. Whether it is broad gate, narrow gate, or any gate, that is going to happen. So broad gate has no issue. If ever I want to defend uh, the standard gate for Sri Lanka, that is for to prevent our future, future yeah, days where the yeah. connection is going to be yeah. to another country, which will be stopped if it is standard. Yeah, yes, sir.
Okay, Dr. Gurwan, you have taken all the time I was going to allocate to you, but the same won't talk again. <laughs> no, no, actually, to tell you the truth, I am uh, more than happy to listen to what you have to say, and you are really looking at the most issues. In fact, what you just said, it's written up in reports, the reason why in the departments are there, there's issue. Uh, I have a question coming from the audience, so let's, let's have a chance to... The mic is not on. No, it's not on. Can you hear it? Yes. Thank you for uh, uh, the, uh, the panel discussion and one my major concern like uh, Dr. Dhrubhan mentioned as the general manager railway. Uh, he doesn't have any power even. I also in an RPI, he don't know what is happening within RPI. I just mean, so one thing is I really, really need what course of action we can do next. Whether we go to the grassroots level and start from there, teaching the whole the mass to change the system. And other thing, now there are so many other projects even I am not that much aware. One is 4.8 kilometer on tunnel to And yes, those things also I really don't know much detail, but maybe we can have another panel discussion. So those things are lined up. I mean now, but I really don't know. You know that uh, at present there is the other proposal uh, to sell the operating express train uh, to the Chinese company. So it is a uh, uh, topic. I mean, it's very obvious. It's early mentioned. Now take the railway. We know everybody in railway is not profitable. That's what we heard. Then I really sometimes question why the railway is not going to adopt that PPP model or whatever the financial model. Now, for the expressway, what is operating now, for the next 10 years, we calculate NPV, and it is 37.5 billion. So it is very profitable thing that our engineers could do here. And the president, on the other hand, asked, you know, the professor who I met for to come here. So if that goes even to outside, so that's also another emerging issue. So many things are lined up. I think my uh, question is we must uh, get into a course of action to. Resolve the issue. I really appreciate it because we really need the system support for this transport issue. But the developing situations, we also help us by being in our view. Yeah. You, you are the right one to answer. I, yeah. I've been listening to all the attempts to solve all the problems in Sri Lanka in at least one panel discussion, uh, including the department structure and the recruitment policies and all of that. But if you go back to the context of the Topic today, uh, I think uh, we have before us, uh, you know, some clear decisions to make. That is, uh, do we continue with this? Uh, with this, uh, ex ex you know, being being enamored by expressway building at any cost. Now the question rose. Actually, I was surprised. We were surprised when you put the cost of intercity expressway building against. Uh, uh, sorry, expressway railway building. I'm sorry, I'm mixing up the words. Intercity express railway building uh, as against uh, expressway building. Because my impression was that such railways are very costly, and they are. But unfortunately, in our country now, expressway building is caught up with it. And that's why we are talking about it. If we are going to spend that kind of money, this is what is preferred. We rather spend it on that, which is much more sustainable, which can carry much more people and even goods uh, than uh, this. So I think we have got to that point. And if expressway was building was not costly, we would have even recommended this because that is still a long way off for us. And I still think it is. But if we are spending that kind of money, then this is what we do. The other thing is, uh, going back to Mr. Kriti Selva's question, it is not a question of either or. It is very clear in my presentation. We need another road access to Canada by 2030. There is no question about that. The only question is, do we need a four lane highway? At three times the cost, I don't know, maybe at least three times the cost. And the evidence that we have now is the answer that we don't need. We do it is more than enough for at least 20, 30, 20. 
very fine. Anyway, Kandy cannot take that much more traffic. We need to have a traffic management plan for Kandy as much as we need one in Kalamu. So we need to look at how we are going to manage traffic in Kalamu, in Kandy, and then think of how we are going to connect the two cities. We are not doing that. The railway can actually take people from the core of a city to a core of a city and then they move away from the coast. Otherwise here you have to come from outside to inside which congest the entire system. So I think there's a lot to talk about network building. We need to build networks, not just roads, uh, roads and railways. So I think this public discussion or this panel discussion, I think brings uh, the need to reconsider and reposition the railway as a viable alternative for the future. It has its administrative problems uh, as much as the, uh, the road sector has its own problems. Right? I mean, for example, people say the railway is subsidized. No, railway travel is subsidized in this country as much as expressway travel is subsidized. We don't say that the RD is faulty for uh, subsidizing the expressway travel. No. So, as much as uh, the RDA needs to be efficient, the railway also needs to be efficient. Maybe a little more. And that the greatest countries have done various things to overcome those problems. So, I think we uh, need to make this, this, this uh, uh, statement that the railway is not a mode of the past anymore. It is a mode of the future. And uh, the important thing of this design is that actually it is more futuristic than the expression. So I think that's the message that we need to take on. Now uh, we have five more minutes. I will give a chance to someone to ask one more question and then I want to wrap up. Uh, that's, a, that's a question. Uh, my question. Hello. Uh, so you mentioned there is a national bias railway development, that you know the budget that we are taking so like a very menial sum for railway development. So is it possible, like right now, the ADB is working on light rail transit and there are agencies like Waipan Jaika that are interested in developing the transport sector in Sri Lanka. So is it possible, like is it, because there is such a national bias, is it possible for us to direct those foreign investments, loans or grants, whatever, in the direction of uh, railway transport development, uh, and is that a viable solution? Like, is there an independent body that can do this? And uh, secondly, will there be support for it? Like, will the government allow that kind of thing? Uh, will the people get behind it? So, is that a possible solution? Um, just a question, yeah. uh, Madam. Your name and where are you? Uh, I'm Amanda. I work at Peritel Research. Uh, my name is Amanda. I work at Peritel Research. <laughs> Who wants to take that question? Anybody? <laughs> Sorry. I thought I, I will not speak. <laughs> <laughs> now you are given the opportunity to speak, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Quick answer. The question is very clear. It is up to us. We should lobby for railway transport. It's for the party. I can remember in 1990, uh, late 1990s, or even early 1990s, uh, our pioneer, Mr. John Diandas, was saying the transport policy in this country is driven by car lobby, and that is why always the road infrastructure was getting preference in the policy arena. We have to change it to railway private, public transport private, and it is up to us to direct all those resources and planning as much as possible to the more sustainable public transport and preferably rail transport. For that, in 2015, a team launched by the Ministry of Transport led by Prof. Samal Kumar from the University of Moroto developed a medium term transport master plan encompassing all those sectors and laying down the policies. I don't know what has happened to it now, but what has to happen is Verite research and other research bodies, plus the media, plus the professionals, plus all of us stand up and shout loudly for the railway preference, public transport preference, and sustainability preference of this country. Then only the policymakers' mind can be changed. Okay. I'm a, uh, I don't know, can you give me a moment for me to my views? 
Okay, two minutes you will do that? <laughs> Good. Three. Right, okay. Well, one last time because I like to wrap up and one more going up. But definitely guys, uh, it's 7 that is coming up, so I'll have to accommodate only one question. Huh? Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, just a second, just a second. Just a second. Right, quickly. Your question. My name is Anna Van Laren. I'm from our friends this group. Now, uh, my question is, okay, uh, now, if we, if, if we have to speak in railway and road, yes, I'm with you, it has to be railway. But my question is, that should we have such a, such a connection? Can now, now we all know, our countries, we are the carrying, carrying capacity of those, of, that, of, of those areas, almost free. So, I mean, we cannot expect more cities in our country. So, the best option is to move our cities where we have good carrying capacity, like, uh, okay, now the National Department, they are proposing a uh, corridor from Kalabdu, Kalabdu to Trinkumari. So, should we channel this, all this money to your infrastructure in that corridor? I mean, that should, should we start that conversation? No. No. All right. So that is your thought process. Right? The next question. So you had a question. Please ask the question. We'll collect all the questions that you want to answer. Of course, I am not going to ask any questions. No. I want to do a small uh, lecture. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas. Why railway today is running at a loss? Wow. Okay. Uh, because cool is, uh, from the very inset, I think after three years' time, we were gaining uh, profits on freight run mainly on uh, freight transport. So, we earned a lot of money from freight transport and we gave substitute, we substitute that money to give fair service for the passenger. Earlier, we were the railway was the main service provider for state sector, oil corporation, Pet petroleum corporation, cement corporation, food department, marketing department, all government department. So, gradually, we lost state, total state sector transport because we couldn't provide enough wagons for them, for them to transport tea, coffee and other things. Why? No allocation, no proper allocation done for the railway by the uh, budgets. Uh, only Rampala, Mr. Rampala's time, we imported uh, some bogies called BHO for cement corporation, transport, gypsum and clay. That's the only lot. After then, no, not a single travel uh, for the railway, transport of me, uh, Blinker, we lost that total loss. Only uh, earlier railway, the, uh, railway transport and oil for the oil corporation, and we had a lot of tankers. Up to, I think, uh, after Mr. Rampala's time, Somewhere 80 only, we imported few bogey, uh, double BHO, that is double size of the bogey. That's the last lot, after then no bogey is going to do. What is your proposal, sir? So, uh, we were, all this time we were discussing about the railway and the highway. One idea came, one good idea came out, I think. Why not we have a road rail service, combined service earlier we had? road rail combined service. By developing that, we can have all sort of uh, transport requirement we can meet okay. by introducing the such type of Thank you. Thank you. Uh, One more question on this side. Uh, uh, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Who takes the question? Who wants to ask the question? Go ahead. Uh, I am now very simple. Yes? Okay. Uh, this is not a fiction. Uh, you would have the historians and the panel to take up something uh, with regard to Amanda's question uh, about decision making and uh, diverting funding, foreign funding. Uh, as I know, National Planning Department had now, now uh, have very young but not uh, good experts who can analyze, who can calculate and do everything. But problem is, uh, they their hands are tiny. They are not uh, free to take decisions depending on economic requirements or the country's needs, uh, somebody else is taking all economic decisions. If we can uh, take some action and make some efforts, uh, public, at least uh, not only professionals, 
public to tell you all about those things. I think uh, we can make uh, okay. good right. decision making uh, uh, in a uh, perfect sense. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyway. uh, now, are you guys currently waiting for the last minute to ask all the questions? Because the uh, last question, and then we'll wrap it up. Make it quick. Uh, I'm Nidivari from University of Colorado. So, uh, today, uh, my question is in Sri Lanka. Uh, when I uh, hear all these sanctions and answers, uh, one thing that comes to my mind is in Sri Lanka, roads are being made, uh, but the railway, uh, they just talked about uh, introducing a new railway or coming up with this education only if uh, the government uh, comes up with an express way or uh, uh, only if the demand only the private vehicles are being um, pulled on roads and you know so uh, the railway has been uh, coming as an option only after uh, express wheels and roads have been given the priority and only after the problem is uh, has been arrived. Railway does not have a uh, what do you call it, a proactive uh, plan in Sri Lanka for my uh, knowledge. So, uh, what can we do to change this? Uh, rather than a reactive solution, what can we uh, do uh, in this to make a more proactive for real thing? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Those are the questions we will take now. What, what I like to do, gentlemen, and by the way, just listen, 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 listen. What I like to do is each one of you get to cover those questions one minute here, two minutes each, and we will wrap them. Right? Be very specific and go for it. Yeah. Uh, to Leading onto the last question, yes, railway has a plan, although people don't know. Uh, railway has uh, plan for the entire country. I mean, there are four flights now. In fact, uh, for example, the from Karagama, we proposed Karagama line somewhere around 1980, right? And they started trying to start some work to be studied in 1990, and still it's going on, right? And now, by this time, we have finished up Patrakama and we will have drive from Patrakama to Guttana or Patrakama to Kodui. Right? And in fact, you know, in 1990, both Professor Alpha and I went to identify helicopters. It is time for the youngsters who are present here. The youngsters who are present here, those who are below 30 or below 35, they have a role to play. They must. Are a good question at the running? I mean, good question, Mark, if they are known in the youngsters, may provide another one. But right, I am already covered with those things, so don't put me in trouble by most of those things. I think I should not speak much. Just to answer your question, not only the railway is not proactive, highways are also not proactive. Those are also, as some Professor Kumar said, developed, changed, altered, and newly invented time to time. Who, who said that there should be an expressway uh, uh, to go all of us? And even that expressway, why, should, why was it to be started construction from that end rather than from this end? And now, the Northern Expressway, who planned it? And who changed it to Central Expressway? Why? Nobody knows. We get Sankalpa. Sankalpa Pahalavana Patti Nidhagana Gitino Water. And those Sankalpa turns into projects. So, unfortunately, there are no Sankalpa generating people in the rail. So, what probably we might do, we might have to do probably, is to make all those railway projects that Trial and Amal said, all this is the cars. 10 times more expensive. And when the projects become more expensive 10 times, maybe the people will get attracted to this. <laughs> very, very good place for me to set the, set the, set the scenario here for, for Jamal. Um, now here's, here's the deal. Technically speaking, what you were all trying to do today was to say, in my words, as a citizen, is to pick the lesser of the evils. The reason I say that, and I will give you, I'll turn this around, for each level I would like to come up with this, lesser of the evil. The reason I say that is, 
what we did is we looked at what the country is doing now, borrowing money and doing all those things, and we say if you borrow money, because obviously this money is borrowed, right? It's not coming from anybody's pocket. This is borrowed money. Anything we do here today is coming from China, India, or some place like that. That's a no-brainer. So what we borrow money is rather than spending on that borrowed money on expensive road projects, give some of that money for a train project, right? Because that is the only way we get the money. And there's justification for that. You will explain that rather clearly. <coughs> However, uh, the gentleman left my friend, the grass granny there, that mentioned, whether it is road. By the way, for your information, I have done my research work. I didn't want to take people's time. These issues that we discussed are there all over the world. When it comes to railways and road, this issue is there. In fact, I literally I read a little statement. It says there's no issue of trains or railways. They both have to exist as uh, engineer. Chula is one of our past president said they are all and, and that's exactly about what you said. So we have to look at this holistically and do the right solution. However, your intention was to showcase, given the context of the country as it is, the options we have. And one of the most compelling options is to think about the railway systems, right? Now, what I'd like to ask you, Amal, and for your final comment. Wouldn't it be better as we move along? So you, you create this interest, right? I mean, this, this has been discussed, this has been written up, then you have to go to the TV and really create a public awareness. Wouldn't it be better, particularly from someone like you, to come up with the overall context of it? Of course, we can also, you can also solve the problems of the government bravely, but one of the key issues the people will ask is, what about the department? Will it run efficiently once a bravely system is given, right? Improvements of the department. All those things have to be taken into context. And maybe the discussion should go forward with a holistic solution. Because otherwise people will simply come up and say there's a there's a group of people, eminent people, or rather intelligent people, who are now proposing go to the railways. Uh, finally we say that jack up the price, you know, dress the bigger the number, the, the chances of you getting the proposal is high. So all these uh, sort of sarcastic thought processes are among our citizens, rather than looking at the right solution. Because that is how it has been played out as uh, so what I would like uh, for Samar is to come up and say what should be the future scenario for this journey now that we have proposed this solution, this idea. It is very clear, the technical part is very clear. How should we go about What do you guys plan to do in the future about this? How do you plan to bring the awareness to the public? That's what I like to post. Yes, you can take even a little bit so I come to uh, Broadly, I think we have to realize that as our country's income increases, our mobility increases. Going by uh, world patterns, we have to expect just, that... Just a quick question. So you believe our income is going to go up? You know, I'm trying to get on most of the... Uh, so I just, just a question. Right, okay. Let, let's assume that, right? <laughs> right, that's okay, that's okay, that's fine. Okay, uh, okay. Right. So, uh, now, based on that, uh, our mobility is going to go up from two to three packs. Okay, not only our vehicle population, our mobility. Yes. Right? Yes. And every generation travels double, triple the one. So we need to find out. All these projects need 10, 20, 30 years to be actually conceived, planned, designed, and built. We have to plan now. Not for what is happening next year, but for you know two times the traffic content. And that's not only the camp. All over the world, all over the time. Now, up to now, we think that mountain mobility can only be provided by right? And now, today, I think the experts on either side of me who are railway experts and in the best the country can find have come up and told now the railway can contribute to this. In urban areas with electrification, modernization, in intercity, and in goods transport, and even as a modern intercity express network, which I have not thought of writing for this new So that is the point where we need to say now, solution we must not look only to highways. As I said, none of those feasibility studies have even looked at highways, at railways. It should not have been done that way. So at least now let us learn to correct it. What projects we can re-engineer uh, and, you know, Let's look at it. I think it's still not late, too late 
to look at the section from Galagara, from uh, uh, <coughs> to Galagara, uh, to see whether we can design it as a two lane section. I repeat that we need a right? But I think it's time for us to consider the, the viability of rail or road, and ultimately we may need to have both. But in some cases, we may have to have one before the other. And in most cases, I think it is a railway we need now to uh, consider before because the railway has been neglected in most of these solutions so far. Yeah. So I think that's uh, where uh, the railway as a technology should be considered one part because it has a future. It's not only the good old railway. Sure. The second question about institutional structures, right? Now, I remember the time when we had the public works department. I remember the time when we had the highway department. Okay? Now, I mean, highway department, but PWD became highway department and many others, and now, you know, that has become the RTA. So, depending on what you need, the country needs to change its institutional mechanisms. There are very successful government departments running railways over there. There are very successful private companies running railways over there. There are many shades of institutions in between as well. So I think we need to find that as well. Find the memo. If you don't need the railway, you need the department. What about the department? If you don't have a future for the rail, rail technology in this country, why worry about the inefficiency of the railway department? It's carrying only 5%. That is the mentality now, unfortunately. But if you want to look at it, yes, we have to tackle that question. But the Guruan, with all his experience, has done almost a U-turn in his perspective of, you know, uh, of how it should be managed, and I think I agree with you. We have to be realistic, and uh, you know we have to look holistically as to what is, uh, is is needed to make an institution competitive and serving the public, because that is what will ultimately uh, make it acceptable to the public. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Amal, and uh, I will answer a separate word of thanks. So essentially. Uh, let me read something, I think this is essentially what you summed up, Professor It says, railway transport, road transport, these notions are not two antagonistic problems, as one may think, but they represent, in fact, a false dilemma. Maharudha Railfar Kumbhai in a debate taker, Atharama, Hadagata debate taker. That's right. Lately, due to the so-called priorities regarding either the construction of the new highways or the development of more efficient railway lines, these two notions only generate excuses and motivation that they know it. Now, if you think that this is related to Sri Lanka, this is not Sri Lanka, this was written in 2010 in uh, Romania. This was in 2010 from an article. So with that uh, comment, I think the discussion is over, but I would like to invite Kumut uh, Herat from Mechanical Engineer Section Committee. Is he, is he in the room? Kumut, it is not there. I will have to do the vote of thanks myself. Is Kumut there? I saw him coming in. Right. Let me, let me do that part as well. Since I have the mic, probably do it this way. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a very exciting and a thought-provoking uh, session. Today I must tell you that I think this is the beginning of a long journey. Rather not a long journey, but a journey that we can go fast as Rajin said on a fast track. I think this got to be done fast because I think the country needs uh, these solutions. As an individual, I would say that having a good public transport system properly laid out at the right places, using railway, I think it's a no brain as far as I think most sensible people will agree to that. But the question is that we have to make sure that we don't continue the path that we have been continuing, just getting borrowed money and doing things that end up nowhere. So that we have to be very cautious about. It. So my request to the eminent panel, who has the understanding of this, because there are practitioners, there are two general managers of the railways here, and there's an eminent scholar here who has uh, done uh, lifelong studies on transport systems. There are gentlemen who have been living in for the last four decades or more. Uh, so all these people put together, there is a lot of wisdom here. But let's do the right thing for the country. That's my request from all of you. Having said that, without taking any further deal from you, 
I would like to thank Engineer Priyad De Silva, uh, Professor Amal, and Ranjit, Mr. Ranjit Desanayake, and Dr. Guru Ruwan for expressing your thoughts so very eloquently. Good day. I will uh, we'll have, to have a separate uh, session with you on this one because we have a lot to say about this. I know that. Uh, but uh, your energy actually kept things going, definitely, as expected. Uh, so thank you very much, all of you. I have a little token of appreciation for the... So there's a little token of appreciation for the Sri Lanka Society for Transport and Logistics with whom we are doing some work now. So please, we are going to... With that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. Thanks for being here. We will continue this journey, lecture series uh, into the future. Definitely we'll have to do that. Thank you. Good night.